Welcome to the Call by God podcast with Adney Godet and myself, Nixon Sylvain. This show is about dialogues of biblical characters and testimonies of Christians who submitted to the will of God. Each week, we bring on one guest so that they can share their story of how they were called by God. I hope this show inspires you. Enjoy. Welcome, welcome to the Call by God podcast. I'm your host, Brother Nick, and I'm here with Sister Adney Godin. Sister Godin, how are you doing on this blessed day? Hey, Brother Nick, I am doing wonderful, wonderful. I can't complain. Um, I'm just excited to go over these 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 three episodes that um for quarter one. So I'm just excited. How are you doing? I'm blessed. I can't I can't complain. And um, I will say this. Um, first of all, I want to give kudos, shout out to all of our listeners. Man, we are on a roll, but we only only are doing it by the grace of God. But also, I don't want to forget or neglect even the ones that are listening and those that are sharing. So if this is your first time listening, please subscribe, share. And even if you feel it's not going to be a blessing to you, just share it. Share that to someone that you may feel will benefit. And we do have a lot of resources on our website on www.callbygodpodcast.com. And also, we have some good things that's what we're working on. Adney. I don't know if I should spill the beans, but uh, we have some great things that we're about to share. And uh, we're looking forward to, to see what God is about to do uh, with this platform. But I know it's not about that. It's really about the show, right? I just thought I'd just put all that stuff out there. But Adney, I'm excited to talk about quarter one. So when we talk about quarter one, we talk about January, February, of course, this month. Um, and Adney, it's it's a women's month, right? Any any shout out you want to give to the women? I don't want to forget about the sis. Yes. Look, let me tell you something. I shout out every single woman that I've um, collaborated with this uh, book, Joyfully Courageous, with uh, Kimberly Hardy. Thank you, my sister, for putting this project together, being so tenacious, courageous in getting everything done, um, putting the book editing the book, um, formatting the book and getting all of us together on one accord in one page and even building this sistership. I want to thank every single woman. I'm going to call every single one of y'all names out. I'm talking about Pam Hibstead, Tamara Marsh, Arvilia Chambers, Kendra Dublin, um, I want to call out Michelle Wright, Amber Suggs. I want to call out Renee Seward. I'm calling out Jasmine. I, and her name is Jasmine Joyner, Kimberly Kelly, my sisters. I just want to call all of y'all out because this book has touched so many lives, men and women, surprisingly, right? Um, so I am just so grateful and thankful. And I know I'm forgetting somebody. So please forgive me. Here you go. The good thing guru herself, Kimberly Cleveland, (laughs) you know, can't forget you, sis. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Um, uh, Missy Brown. Thank you. Thank you, sisters, for all saying yes to this collaboration. I want to say that I honor you as my sisters. I want to say that I love you all as my sisters. We serve a powerful and mighty, amazing God. And what I will pour into you all is this. Keep on stepping. Keep on walking. Because it is not for naught that you are doing it. God is getting the glory out of all of it. And if I've forgotten anyone's name, please forgive me. Charge it to my head and not my heart. Because the book is not in front of me. So you, I love you mentioned y'all. the book. Where, where can our listeners get the book if they're interested? Name of the title. Where can it get? The book is both. The, the the book is on Kindle and you can get a, a soft copy on Amazon under Joyfully Courageous. Um, look, let me tell you, it will bless your life. That's what I will say. Yeah, amen. I like what you sisters are get, uh, doing as well. And also, look, it's a bestseller. So it's a it's it's one of the top books. So you don't just get best. Uh, I know Addie can brag about it more than I can, but we give God the glory for what you guys yes. are doing as well. Amen. Yeah. 
But Addy, let's let's get right into it. So today episode, of course, as I alluded to, is the quarter one, the top three. And, you know, there are some episodes that get more attention than others. But again, Adney and I, we enjoy every episode. It's just some listeners, they just like listen to certain episodes than others. So we're going to touch on the top three of quarter three. So um, the top three, uh, uh, well, I'm going to just mention the top three, and then we're going to play a snippet of each episode. And we're going to have dialogues about it. So the first episode we'll be uh, discussing is uh, our biblical discussion, Adney, on Jacob part, uh, part one. So if you haven't heard the whole episode, please go back and listen to uh, Jacob part one. This episode 123. Uh, also, the second episode we'll be uh, discussing is episode 126, is Firm Roots and Foundation part one. Go back and listen to that, and we'll be playing a snippet as well. And also, the final and last episode is episode 128 it's a a devotion that adney had with her son he's he's a he's a he's a man he's a young man adney told me don't call him young man she she said oh he's still a baby but he's a he's a young uh well, i want to say young man and adney i don't want you to get on my case but he got a lot of wisdom <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> look <laughs> Look, he's still my baby, okay? He's yeah, still baby. my baby, so. Yes. <laughs> and I get it. I get it. I get it. So go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and play episode number one. We're going to play a snippet and we're just going to have a dialogue. So here it goes. And two peoples are from within you shall be divided. The one shall be stronger than the other and the older shall serve the younger. So God gave her an answer because like I just alluded to, she didn't know what was going on. Yeah. So now we we're so fortunate to to say, hey, mm-hmm. a woman could say, I'm pregnant. Let me go to the doctor to see what's going on. Yeah. But it wasn't yeah. so back but, then. But God, but I love how God responded to her. She said, basically, two nations are at war in your womb. Mm-hmm. The division was already there. It said, like God said, the 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 young the older shall serve the younger. So this is what it's going to be like. And even if we like kind of go back a little, you think about Ishmael and Isaac, the, the older shall serve the younger. <laughs> yeah. Right. So like God is very strategic in, in this plan. Yeah. So yeah, his, his word so will, will not return to him void for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to briefly talk about. All right. All right. Addy, any thoughts on episode 123, Jacob? Um, you know, I love how strategic our father is because what just came to my spirit is even when we look at our savior now, right? The, the angels were created and then here it is, we're created. And then he had to send, you know, our, our, our big brother, Jesus to, to, um, to, for us to have the right to salvation, so it's like God is very strategic in everything. If we look throughout the scriptures, we'll see where the older ones are serving the younger ones. Like, it's, it, to me, it even blows my mind till now <laughs> that the the younger ones sometimes are like the black sheep, but God uses them in such a mighty and powerful way. Amen. And and that's facts. Uh, I, I guess for me, uh, with Jacob's story, um, and and I know we've mentioned this numerous times on various episodes where these individuals are not perfect. They they're flawed, but yet um, over time they will mature over time. So when he says the older, you know, the the older will serve the younger. God had a calling um, on Jacob's life, obviously, and. And I know the little snippet we heard, we heard how uh, God would would bless two nations. Of course, they're twins. So Jacob had a twin, twin named Esau. Uh, So we briefly talked about the wife, um, Isaac's Isaac's wife, who was pregnant uh, with two children, one of which is is Jacob. But we know we know that Jacob was a mama's boy. And it's funny because I'll talk about your son and I said, oh, you can't let your son go. Right. But Jacob was a mama's boy. And um, Esau, his brother, was was a, a daddy's boy, and and I like this. Uh, you know, it's it, you know, it's not the point because that no mama's boy, but I guess what I'm trying to highlight is that Jacob, God used Jacob even despite his flaws. Because when we talk about what his name means, slanderer, and he's deceiving his brother, took the birthright, and I know his mother had a lot to do with it too, Adney, because we talked about that on the episode. 
but God still had a call to his life. And if you are listening to this episode, God still can use you. You know, don't don't never feel depleted, spiritually depleted, and don't never feel useless. Like, like no matter how much wrong you you may have done on this earth, God still could turn things around for you for his good. And and we we see that in Jacob. And what I like about Jacob's story where you see him where um, he's immature because these are the early stages, right? Because it's a process because change happens, change don't happen overnight. It's an ongoing process. So even with Jacob, this change um, that happened to him spiritually happened, it didn't take overnight. It was a process. So um, as we continue to read Jacob's story, we could see his maturity, his spiritual maturity. And he's the one that had the limp because he was wrestling with the angels. So so that's what I like about Jacob's story. We see in the beginning stages, he was immature. And in his latter years in his life, you see the maturity in him. So that's what I wanted to add uh, about Jacob. I, I can't let you leave without saying this. <laughs> I was having this, a conversation with my spiritual father and he said, if we as Christians would pay attention to nature, we would see how God wants us to be. He said, when you look at a caterpillar in its adolescent stage, it is so destructive. It eats everything. It just destroys everything. But then when it goes into its cocoon, the chrysalis, it dies in there. But when it dies in there, he has to break free out of that chrysalis and he emerges to an amazingly beautiful butterfly. That's all of us. Like when you were talking about Jacob, that's what that's what analogy went straight through my mind. Yeah, he was very destructive. He was a liar. He was a cheater. He, (laughs) you know, he was a pretty boy. He was lazy and all this stuff. But when he gets to his uncle, he worked seven years for a woman and then worked seven more years for that same woman. Right. And then he eventually matures to the point where God changes his name. Like that's powerful to me. Yeah. Wow. That's God will give you a new name and a new identity. So that's what I wanted to share. So we're going to go ahead and go to the next episode. It's uh, it's Firm Roots and Foundation. Particular event, um, it's kind of been an ongoing evolution for me personally. Uh, different people, different congregations that I worship with at different points in my life, I think have been instrumental to forming um, and shaping the Kevin I am today. Um. One of the the most challenging seasons of my life was the loss of my father in 2010. Um, And um, that was a tough moment. I had recently just separated uh, from initial uh, training in the U.S. Army, brand new soldier. I had communicated with him, hey, pops, you know, can I move in? I'm coming back home to go to school. And he agreed. Um, and you know, three months later he was gone. So, um, from the same thing we were discussing earlier, cancer. And, um, so that was a very hard, um, time, you know, I was kind of thrust into being the representative of my father's estate at like what, 20 years old, you know? So, um, wow. Adney, I could tell from this discussion that he really missed his dad. And the reason why that resonates with me so much, so even though my dad haven't been there in my life, you know, I'm, I'm older now, and my daddy must have been in my life five or six times, maybe. So right now, I'm in a stage right now when I'm trying to build a relationship with my dad, you know, and, and I know probably someone might be listening and be like, man, my dad is not in my life. But I, I guess the only way, if the dad do decide to come back in that child's life, the only way those forgiveness could come in or seep into one's heart, it only could come through Jesus Christ. So I think someone asked me, like, man, how was you able to do it? How were you able to forgive your dad considering he was the day of your life? And people got to understand this, Adney. Let me just say this. Life is short. Life is short. You know, we hold on to things and we lack of forgiveness. Because I know Brother Kevin was like, he he was brought up with his mom. His mom raised him. He's a, he's a young man that's wise and he ended up going to school, getting his degree in the military army, and he's a servant of God. So the, you know, just, and I, I could see, I could see like if his daddy was still alive, his daddy would be proud of the man that he has become. 
in Christ Jesus. So I'm sure he had so many accomplishments, you know, after his dad's death. And just the thought of um, just talking about his dad, because any any child want that. So where I'm at right now, when I talk to my dad, it's like he's proud of me. Like, wow, son, like who taught you this? Who taught you these things? Like, I'm so proud of you. And I, I'm sure when Kevin was talking and, and you got to go back and listen to the episode because I don't want to give it all away. But it was a very it was a touching moment when he started talking about his parents. And it could be a loss of a, a, a mother um, or a parent or a loved one. It's just the thought that he's a, a, a man that's serving the Lord and he honored his dad. And he even acknowledged like, hey, this was the lowest point. Because I want y'all to know that Christians, we go through stuff too. When we lose loved ones, when we lose loved ones, we have times of, of uh, our low season. Not everybody is Job. Not everybody could, not everybody could throw themselves on the floor and just start worshiping God. You know, everybody has a different spiritual level. And God works with everybody according to their faith. So what you want to add on what you just heard from Brother Kevin or what you recall from this episode? Um, As I listened to him, the one thing that came to my mind was God was strategic in that as well. Like he leaves the military and goes to live with his dad for three months. Like he had his dad in his life for three months and then his dad was gone. Maybe, just maybe that's all the time he needed to feel the presence and the relationship of his father. Um, Sometimes we look at time and God just is like, um, I work outside of time. That's probably all Kevin needed was those three months. Um, One of my my little big brothers, I call him my little big brother. um, His father just passed away and he said, I didn't have a relationship with him, but I still heard the pain in his text because that still popped. Right. My nephew who lived with his dad and he was like, you know, yeah, he was here, but it was like he wasn't here. So there's there's a you know, there's always that that thing that, yeah, sometimes your dad is there, but it's like he I wish he wasn't here, you know. So just hearing that, let me help me to understand our father in heaven. For years, for years, for years, for years, I held on to the fact that my biological father was not a part of my life. But let me tell you something. When I talk to my sisters, especially one that I've grown close to, I realize I didn't miss out on anything. I really, truly didn't. And I want people out there to understand, especially if you have a relationship with God, yes, Your earthly father, having a relationship with him makes a difference. But the most important relationship is the relationship with your heavenly father. Because there are things that he will do for you that your earthly father cannot do. Release it. Let it go. If he ain't there, turn to God. I promise you the fulfillment you will get from God is way better than that time span that this person is going to give you. I'm, but I was proud of Kevin for sharing that part of his story with yeah. us. Amen. Yeah. And if you're a man out there listening to this episode and you have a child or children, I beg you, please, please, please get in your children's or your child's life. Uh, they need you. I don't think any, um, most men don't, I, I don't think they understand the importance of them, their presence around their children. And Adney, I, I'm learning that my son, when I pick him up, he was just counting some years now. He's like, hey, daddy, you know, X amount of years, I'm going to be in high school. And then he's like, X amount of years, I'm going to be in college. And in my mind, I'm like, whoa, I need to start spending some. I mean, I spend time with him, but I'm like, man, I need to take it up a notch. You know, so I, I think so parents, look, dads and even moms, mom, listen. If your baby's daddy is not in your child's life, work something out where he could spend time with his daughter or his son or his children, especially if he's a man that's trying. We get now if he's like a deadbeat and and um, he's into all kind of crazy stuff. I get it because you probably don't want your child to be exposed to crazy stuff. I get it. But at the same time, um, if he's trying, because there are some good men out there, Adney, that really sincerely try to be there for their children. But sometimes the mom hold that against them uh, because they're no longer together. It happens all the time. And then the, the, the father, the dad looks like the bad guy. So if you're a mom, tighten up. <laughs> All I right, agree. Andy. So I agree with you. Yeah. I'm happy that you said that. Yeah. 
I agree with you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So we're going to, yeah, we're going to go to the next one. I, I know, I know this one, this next one is you and your son. <laughs> so it's called, uh, it's a, obviously it's a devotion. We didn't have a title for it. So we just put devotion. So go back and listen to it. Episode 128. Um, but it, it, they're going to be talking about Matthew 6, chapter 6, verses 14 through 15. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you for making it midway through this episode. We want to take a moment to sincerely thank each and every one of you who have been supporting our show. Your encouragement and positive feedback mean the world to us. We want to continue to bring you inspiring and thought-provoking content each week, and that's where we need your help. We kindly ask you to support our podcast by clicking on the link provided in the description below. Your support will enable us to grow, reach a wider audience, and continue to produce the quality content you enjoy. We truly appreciate your support and value your contribution to the Call by God podcast. Together, let's inspire and uplift others in their faith journey. Thank you once again for your continued support, and we look forward to bringing you more enlightening episodes in the future. God bless. Of this verse is also letting us know how we can be expected to be forgiven by God when we don't know how to forgive someone else. So really, we expect to be forgiven for something that we have done, but we haven't learned how to forgive someone else for something that they have done to us. So at that situation, you're now being hypocritical because you want to be forgiven for something that you've done, but you can't forgive some person that, for what they've done. And it can be like the smallest thing, like somebody cuts you off at the line in the in the Wendy's. We're trying to get your uh, biggie bag or your four for four. Like, like they cut you off. <laughs> Andy, man, your son is wise, man. I like that dude. He's a cool dude. He's all right with me. <laughs> but you know what? He's right, though. He's right. You know how many people walking around here with unforgiveness in their heart, Adney? You look, listen, man. I don't know, Adney. You wanna you wanna start off? That was that was your devotion. You wanna start off? I love him. The way he loves referencing food to me is always yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because that's yeah, that's his jam, you. right? Food is his jam. But yeah. Let's, in all seriousness, I remember being at worship service. There was a situation that arose between me and a couple of sisters. And I remember the Lord working on my heart. And I went to both these sisters and I asked for forgiveness. And it wasn't so much of, you know, the front. It was the sincerity. Like God said, I need you to go to them. And they both told me they forgave me. But their attitudes toward me showed me that they didn't. And later on, one of them, her and I, we reconciled. But the other one, the disrespect that I would receive from her at worship service, and I had to swallow it. And then one day the Holy Spirit said, no, you don't have to swallow it. You don't have to allow this person to treat you any kind of way because you've asked her for forgiveness And not only did you ask her for forgiveness, but before you went to her, you came to me and you spoke to me and you repented to me. So I release you of this. Sometimes, sometimes you're missing on your blessing because you're holding someone in your heart that needs to be released because it's not for you. Forgiveness is for you, not that person. Release it. Um, you may be applying for a job and you're not getting the job that you want because God is saying, uh, you have an ought against your sister or you have an ought against your brother. I'm not giving that to you. When I put you on this job, you're going to have a situation arise and you're going to have an ought with these people and you're supposed to be my light. If you can't even do it with your brother and sister in Christ, why in the world would I allow you to do it in the world? No, I'm not giving you that position. So that's one of the things I had to learn about forgiveness. It frees me. It really, truly frees me. Period. Wow. 
You know, I thought about the passage uh, in the Bible where Peter approached Jesus, Matthews 8, 21, 22. Peter came um, unto Jesus and he said, he said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times. Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but 77 times. So it's an ongoing, so it's not um, literal 77. That means people is going to cross you. Jesus was telling Peter that people will cross you, your brothers will cross you, and you have to forgive. That's it. And I think the forgiveness thing is a faith issue. It's like trusting in God like, Lord, because your, your son is right. The thing is, we're so hypocritical, right? We, we, are, we are flawed individuals. We make countless of mistakes. There's, there's no one person here on earth today that walk a perfect walk from the time the person get up to the time the person goes to bed. You're not going to walk a perfect walk. You're not going to be flawless. You're not going to be perfect. You're not going to be super good or a good person. You're going to do something that's going to be a contrary to, to God's word, will, and way. Right? You can't just check off a box and be like, Oh, I gave to the poor, check. I did this person good. No. What about your thoughts? Because you could murder somebody in your heart. You could have jealousy in your heart. So people don't, people look at it like it's just tangible, like you have to physically do something. But what about what's going on internally? You could look at somebody and say, you know what? I don't like the way that girl looks. I don't like the way she dressed. She thinks she's all of that. Well, you just hated her. You just murdered her in your heart. You know what I mean? So you can't, you, that's why your son said, like, if somebody crossed you across the road and, and, and what you going to do, you just going to speak French and I don't mean little French to them? No, you got to, you got to learn how to forgive people. And, and I think if we have, extend that grace to people, Addy, if we extend that mercy to people and say, you know what? And, and, and I'm not saying to let people exploit you or take advantage of you. If somebody cross you, just talk to them. Just taught them like, hey, I don't like the way you did this. Can we pray about it? Because we were, and that's, that's dealing with conflict, right? And and I, I think that's a wisdom that only comes from above. And that's a faith thing because you do, you cannot avoid it because now you give that person power, right? The person even worried about you. And Adam, you said that on numerous episodes. I, it's that quote that you quote. I'm gonna leave it up to you. And the, the thing is, when you hold unforgiveness in your heart, you really give that person power. It's like that person have power over you. And then here you are, you can't sleep, you're losing weight, you're stressing yourself out, hoping that something bad happened to them. And no, no, nothing bad gonna happen to them. They're gonna keep living their life. But yet you're bitter, you're you're unforgiving. And Adney, one other thing I want to add before um I give it to you before we close. Uh, I was watching this um, video and this guy, he was talking about how he went to heaven and he says, um, he, um, he said he didn't, God wouldn't, wouldn't let him in the pearly gates uh, because he had a lot of unforgiving in his heart. He said, God is like, he was like begging God. He's like, God, give me another chance. Give me another chance. God said, uh, uh-huh. you see what well, he said? Yeah. You was masking all that stuff up on the external. You look like you was good, but internally, you, it's a lot of unforgiveness you had in your heart. And I think that if people do not get it together, they don't ask the Lord, our Savior Jesus Christ, for help to get that stuff out of their heart, man, it won't go well with them. So I just hope and pray that if there's someone out there that have unforgiveness in their heart, number one, you got to forgive yourself and ask God to help you to forgive. Oh, uh, it's, like, it's, like when you, it's like when you say, um, and Brother Daniel says that, it's, it's uh, drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's heavy. Drinking poison, especially the other person to die. But what I, what I will say is this, um, I am in a set, a season right now of, of, of heart surgery. Um, God has been revealing so much stuff to me. And the reason I'm sharing this with our listeners is he will do the same for you. If you desire to really walk with the Lord, the way the Lord intends, There are things inside of you that you need him to expose. Don't be afraid to pray the prayer of God. Expose me to me. Open my heart and allow me to see me. If there's jealousy, there's unforgiveness, if if there's hate, if there's, you know, um, fornication, lust, all that stuff, if those things are inside of me, I need you to expose it to me. 
And let me tell you, he will do that. But as he's exposing it, you have to do the work to get those things out of you. It's work. You can't just ask him and not move. So that's the final thing I have to say. Forgive. Forgive. Don't let no one on this time side of life hold you hostage. Because one thing you have to remember, I don't have a heaven or a hell to put you in. Brother Nick don't have a heaven or a hell to put you in. And the scriptures tell us to, to be afraid of the one that could kill both spirit and body. And that's God. Nobody else has that power over you. So if you want heaven, forgive. Amen. All right, world. So that's it. Please go back and listen to all episodes. We're going to put the link in the show notes. Uh, this was definitely a blessing to me. And just remember that Jesus Christ, he is the King of Kings and he's the Lord of Lords. Be blessed. That's it for now. But before we go, please continue to listen, subscribe, and share our podcast. Also, if you want to support our show, please scroll down to the bottom of the show notes and click on the link that says buy me a coffee. We would greatly appreciate it. Thank you for listening. And remember, God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. And also, Jesus Christ loves you. Thank you. Wait, there's more. What if today was your last day on earth? Would you be ready to meet your maker? Well, Jesus Christ has given us the good news. He told his disciples in Mark 16, 15, 16, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Jesus Christ has instructed his children to share and preach the gospel, which is the good news, which means that Jesus Christ came and that he was sacrificed. He was buried and he rose on the third day by believing and by repenting and confessing and being baptized. You will be saved. So it is your choice. Jesus Christ will not force you. You've heard the message. You heard personal testimonies. But this is your opportunity to give your life to Christ. Don't wait until tomorrow, because tomorrow is not promised. So I hope you submit to the will of God and give your soul to Christ. Be blessed.